lot of uh, President Trump supporters here. Greatest movement in the history of our country. The silent majority is stronger than ever before. For all of the comments that Joe Biden has made that have been bigoted, for all of the policies that Joe Biden has made that have really, really hurt the black community and set us back, Joe Biden needs to apologize and needs to stay in his basement. But if you just take a step back for a second, think about the way that China, Russia, North Korea, Iran, all of our adversaries around the world are salivating, thinking that this guy is going to be the, the possible president of the United States. What we would have is a systemic recession if it was a Joe Biden administration come November, uh, because he would start implementing policies that we know are regressive in nature, that we know are not good for the economy. It would be about higher taxes more regulation. President Trump delivered the hottest economy on record that had to be artificially interrupted by the coronavirus. When we compare the work President Trump did to build that strong economic foundation with basement barely there Joe Biden. Behind Biden is a machinery that is very dangerous, very progressive. You want a leader, you want someone who stands up and tells it like it is, who tells the truth no matter what. Uh, this group or that group or the media on some source or another might say the only choice is Donald J. Trump. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. We will make America great again. Welcome. Wednesday just got better because the ladies are live. Just the topics of the week with you tonight. And we will make America great again. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to The Right View. I'm Laura Trump, Senior Advisor to President Trump's re-election campaign. As always, we have a fantastic show ahead with the ladies of The Right View. As always with me is Kimberly Guilfoyle, National Chair of Trump Victory, Mercedes Schlapp, Senior Advisor for Strategic Communications, and Katrina Pearson, Senior Advisor to the Trump campaign. Please be sure to like and share this broadcast with your friends. All right, ladies, welcome back to The Right View, the latest example of the mainstream media weaponizing the coronavirus against President Trump is unfolding right now. As some states in the Sun Belt see an increase in coronavirus cases, the media and Joe Biden are attempting to blame it on the president. Shocking how that works. <laughs> However, they are selectively reporting certain facts, hmm, and sowing discord to advance their anti-Trump agenda. Vice President Pence set the record straight during an interview on Sunday. Watch this. Because of the leadership that President Trump has provided, because of uh, the extraordinary innovation that we have brought to this task, we are uh, we're in a much better place uh, to respond to these outbreaks than we were four months ago. I mean, today we are now testing 500,000 Americans a day. We're able to do a great deal more surveillance and community testing than ever before. Okay, testing 500,000 American citizens a day. Katrina, why does the media refuse to talk about how President Trump built the world's most extensive coronavirus testing system in record time? Well, Laura, because of the narrative, of course, you know, because if they talked about this massive system uh, that was superior to all others, they would have to admit that the rise in cases is due to the massive amount of testing and not so much the Trump rally. Imagine that. You know, uh -huh. I just think that it's interesting that, you know, the media will do any and everything that they can to, to hide information from the public because that's what they're doing. They're hiding the information and creating their own narrative to fit their agenda, not even with a care in the world as to how it impacts Americans. So there are many Americans who are out there thinking that the coronavirus is back and it's just the number of cases 
that are going up. Of course, people are still contracting it every now and again. It is a flu. It is going to happen, but it's not happening because of some, some mysterious way that this virus works. It's just happening because the president is testing 500,000 people at a time. And I think that it, it's a really great thing. And it, it's, it's tragic truly to how this narrative has been spun to the American public, um, which is actually convincing them to literally stop their lives and to yeah. stop their interactions with people, which is actually doing a lot more harm than good. Yeah, we should also note that while the cases are rising, the death rate has dropped significantly across this country. And I think we can all agree, people did what they had to do for months on end. We all shut down the economy, stayed inside, didn't see our friends, didn't participate in life. That is not living. People want to get back to work and back to normalcy. Mercy, how important was the president's leadership in steering the American economy to reopen safely? And how much has the media been shocked by the great American comeback? Yeah, I mean, we just saw consumer confidence rise back up again. We've seen retail sales go up 18%. Obviously, the May jobs report was at 2.5 million jobs created. And so I think what you're seeing is the fact that, look, we've been impacted, all of us, by coronavirus. And But at the same time, President Trump, because he built such a fundamentally strong economy, has been able to ensure that we sustain this, what I would say, the blow, the artificial yeah. interruption of coronavirus. Let me just say, make one point here. Coronavirus is being politicized by the left and by the media. And there you have Joe Biden trying to put the blame on the president while he himself is to fault for saying that by putting the trade restrictions, uh, the travel restrictions on China, the travel restrictions on China, that that's a xenophobic move. But let me tell you, that saved lives. Yes, and the president is in constant communication with these governors in order to understand, look, sometimes we're gonna reopen some of these businesses, sometimes we need to make adjustments, but there's no question that he has made sure that we are having enough of these supplies in our stockpile in order to deal with these cases of coronavirus that are impacting Americans in our country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, since you brought up old Joe Biden, if he were in charge, our country would still be in economic ruins. In fact, he doesn't even have an agenda for America. But Kimberly, it yeah. does beg the question, where's Joe Biden? Exactly. And let me tell you something about like Joy. What is she, Biden's campaign manager? And boy, does she th sound like she's unenthused about him. She's like, just stay there, wow, creepy wow. Joe, because we just don't want Trump. Wow, that's a good platform. Um, but yes, we want a landslide, but for Trump. So Joe Biden doesn't even know where Joe Biden is, right? So it's really impossible to say. But I will tell you where he is not, though. He's not standing in front of the media answering for his records. He's not explaining to voters why he opposed the president's decision to shut down travel from China to slow the the spread of coronavirus. He's not explaining how his son secured a $1.5 billion investment from the Chinese government. All questions, we'd like answers, but something he only received after landing in the communist nation with then Vice President Biden on Air Force Two, a trip funded by the American taxpayers. Let's talk about that, Joe. And he is definitely not explaining how his racist remarks in support of busing and his work advancing mass incarceration, along with his buddy Kamala Harris that he thinks wants to be his uh, running mate, contributed to the current racial tension in our country today. But I don't believe Joe Biden is hiding because he is a coward. I don't even think that Joe Biden knows that he is hiding. I think he's totally befuddled. He's being controlled by radical political operatives and a family that has profited off of his office for decades and decades. It's a full-time grift. And Joe Biden is their cash cow who they intend to carry across the finish line or drag the body across the finish line. <laughs> and America deserves a real leader. And that's not Joe Biden. Yeah, well, that is for sure. All right. Well, thank you, ladies. Uh, everybody, be sure to like and share this broadcast with your friends. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Stay right where you are. During the
virus pandemic, Joe Biden criticized President Trump's China travel ban. Hysterical xenophobia. He was dead wrong. For 40 years, Biden's been wrong on China, supporting trade deals that destroy American jobs, giving China most favored nation status, letting China walk all over us. The beautiful history we wrote together. But Biden has never been more wrong than now. Hysterical Joe xenophobia. Biden in the White House would be a deadly mistake. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. As we have already seen, his America First agenda has lifted all Americans up and have empowered them with true economic emancipation that has once again made the American dream possible. That's why I want you to text EMPOWER to 88022 right now if you want to keep America great and deliver four more years for President Donald J. Trump. Welcome back to The Right View. I'm Kimberly Guilfoyle, National Chair of Trump Victory Finance Committee. And joining us now is Representative Vernon Jones, Georgia State Representative, Democrat, and proud supporter of President Donald Trump. Representative Vernon Jones, thank you so much for joining us on The Right View today. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. So, Representative Vernon, after the tragic killing of George Floyd, how has President Trump, in your opinion, stepped up and responded by trying to heal our nation? Well, first of all, he immediately got the Justice Department involved. That brings some level of security with folks who went from that community to know that there are some federal oversight and investigation. Second, I think he's been clear about his message that he will not tolerate this type of behavior, that he supports uh, protests, but at the same time, uh, we cannot allow the type of rioting that has been taking place. But he's been firm. He's been direct. Um, he understands and support law enforcement, but, but at the same time, He's making sure that they have the tools and resources that they need at the local level and the state level to carry out whatever investigations they need to bring about some piece of uh, some sense of calm and peace and appreciation from from the president himself. Well, you know, Representative, in, in that vein, when you know we've seen these in the recent weeks, the the violence and the riots that have taken over the city streets, like in Seattle, for example. Um, which is really a truly radical agenda. But I, I want to watch this clip real quick, um, just to give it a, a despicable example that's taking place recently. Good. I hope you're an anti-racist then. How can I be? I'm in mean, white. I'm inherently racist. You just, you just black called him a liar, <laughs> saying you don't have a, a, a black wife and black children. You still have a liar. You're 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 a liar. you the world has a sin problem, man. Okay? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for me. Okay? America has a sin problem. You understand me? That's where racism, injustice, and hate and anger and violence come from. It's not about racism. That's a black white. You understand me? Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. So, look, Representative Jones, we, we see this a lot, and a lot of this is surfacing on the internet. But when do you think people will wake up and realize that this is just the woke white liberals that are really exploiting Black Americans to advance their own political agenda? Well, obviously, you are seeing uh, those white left. Uh, very radical individuals getting involved, infiltrating uh, good protesters, those who really want to exercise their freedom of expression. And I think we all feel and felt what happened with some of the unjust situation, but we can't lump them all in one. But we have these individuals who have a whole new different agenda. Uh, they want to come in. They want to abolish the police department. They want to burn. They want to loot. They want to terrorize. And they want to hide behind those good individuals who really want to protest. And they're hiding behind Black Lives Matter and other organizations. And they're taking advantage of real situation where people are victimized, but for the wrong reason. And so I think what the president and others have been doing, and including myself, is making known that there are different factions happening here. And they're hiding under one umbrella. Um, I like to see the media do a lot more, the liberal media do a lot more between separ separating the protesters who are doing the right thing and those who are rioting, highlighting Antifa, 
where's the Democratic Party on this? Where are they calling out their side, their left side, these radicals, those who support Democratic candidates? If they were doing the same thing uh, and they were hiding uh, uh, on the right side, then you would see the media and the Democrats call out President Trump and the Democratic Party. So that's the hypocrisy of this. Where are they? They need to be called out. The Democratic Party needs to be called out. Congress needs to be called out. Uh, the DNC needs to be called out and others because they are aware of what's going on, but they are silenced. They're hashtag cricket uh, as it relates to the involvement of these radical groups. Well, Representative, you know, you talk about the liberal media in particular and the fake news media refusing to cover Joe Biden's racist record, if that's being the case. Can you walk us through, first of all, why the media refuses to even talk about Joe Biden and his record of doing nothing for the black community? Uh, and, and just address that issue so that our viewers can understand what we're dealing with when it comes to Joe Biden. Well, first of all, I think we all know that President Donald Trump has a track record in just three and a half years where he's done more for African-Americans than Joe Biden has in 49 years. As a matter of fact, if you just ask Joe Biden or maybe the liberal media would ask him, what have you done for African-Americans? Mm -hmm. He can't come up with anything, even his black agenda. Right was point was 2.0 of Donald Trump's agenda, what he had done for African-Americans. Um, you know, Donald Trump um, is really not getting credit for what he's doing. But at the same time, um, Joe Biden has not been held accountable for what he has not done. And look, he has a long history of racial remarks, um, has a long history of of not supporting uh, African-Americans in terms of them being independent thinkers, uh, improving their quality of lives, and, and improving those conditions that can help them stand on their own and not have to rely on the government. And so even as he sits in his basement, where, where is the media calling him out? Um, he sits there and he just comments on what President Trump is criticized for. Uh, he's not doing anything. He's sitting idly by. I don't know if he really knows what's going on. He's primarily reading a script. Someone's telling him what to say. Uh, this needs to be exposed, but the liberal media who's trying to help uh, Joe Biden, they're part of his campaign team, actually. They are not holding him responsible. They're not holding him accountable. Um, he has been bunkered down. We need to smoke him out. Uh, what is his stand truly on, on some of the comments that he's made? What's his stand on abolishing the police department? Not reading the script, but but come out and tell us, tell the American people from his heart what he feels, why he feels that way. What would he, he do uh, to address these issues? Right now, he's not doing anything. And it's appalling almost uh, that the liberal media in trying to help him win uh, is not holding him accountable. Yeah, well, Representative Jones, you're 100% right. Meanwhile, President Trump has done more for black Americans than any president in modern American history, Representative Jones. Could you discuss the president's historic achievements for black Americans, such as some of the lowest unemployment numbers ever in the history of this country for the African-American community, opportunity zones, first step back. There's so much that the mainstream media refuses to cover. So it's up to us to make sure people understand what this president has actually done. Well, I, I think the American people know what this president has done but it's not being emphasized by the media. Uh, I look at it a different way. I look at Joe Biden and I look at the liberal media. When do they put African-Americans on CNN or MSNBC or The View where they have an opportunity to share to the American people what Donald Trump has done for them and what Joe Biden has not done for them? When they put African-Americans on those liberal networks, they're all there bashing Donald Trump. But right. they never put people on there like me and others, mm -hmm. many of my friends that I know, uh, that can come on there and say exactly what President Donald Trump has done. They're almost trying to keep his record from being exposed to African-Americans. And obviously, a lot of African-Americans watch those liberal news stations. And that's the one place where you don't have, unlike Fox, where, where you get the actual news, you're really getting the information and all about Donald Trump's track record on African American. You talked about opportunity zone districts. They help every community, but certainly help African American communities. I'm a proud graduate of North Carolina Central University, a HBCU in Durham, North Carolina. What he's done in terms of restoring funding and going back and writing it into law, no president in the history of this country has ever done anything like that. Uh, also, with the First Step Act, why aren't we talking and why don't we go and have some of those? 
inmates that were in jail from all those years based on the Joe Biden crime bill, why are right. they not mm -hmm. on CNN telling their story about what Donald Trump has done for them and that they're voting for Donald Trump and that Joe Biden is the one who put them in those positions, took them away from their families, uh, destroyed their livelihoods where the crime did not fit the time. That's what's not being told by those who really been impacted by Donald Trump in many, many ways in a positive sense, but at the same time are told uh, about what what Joe Biden has done to bring about mass uh, incarceration and destruction of the black family. That's the real story here. Yeah, well, and it's very interesting that you don't hear about it out there at all, Representative Jones. Final question for you, and then we have to take a quick commercial break. Do you think that people out there in this country are, are waking up to really what has been happening, the fact that they have been lied to by the mainstream media, the fact that Donald Trump has been the one that has been a champion of the black community, has really lifted everyone in this country up. Do you think that people are getting it out there now, even though the polls never reflect it, even though they never talk about it? What is your sense out there? Well, first of all, there's not a segment in, in, in this country or population that has not been impacted in a positive way by uh, President Donald Trump, whether it's minorities, whether it's majorities, whether it's job employment, uh, employment opportunities, small businesses being established, created, and even expansion, the tax cuts that help a lot of the corporations, both large and small and medium, uh, at the same time, what he's done to stand up uh, against foreign countries and making them pay their fair share, and we can reinvest those dollars back in our country and in our infrastructure and in our roads and our schools and our bridges. Uh, obviously, Donald Trump has done a lot, but again, there's an all-out effort for his record to really be discussed. It's an all-out effort to stifle his uh, record of accomplishments, but at the same time, to overlook Joe Biden's lack of, re lack of record of accomplishments. And they're literally aiding and abetting him staying yeah. in home uh, in that basement. They don't want him to get out there. Matter of fact, it's obvious that's a campaign strategy, yes. not to take the message to the American people, but just stay in your basement and just respond to everything that Donald Trump does. Yeah. Uh, that's the hypocrisy of this whole thing in terms of what Donald Trump is doing and what Joe Biden is not doing. And, and that story needs to be told. Uh, this president deserves a second term. This president has a vision to get us through this pandemic crisis. At the same time, take us back to unemployment where we were prior to the pandemic uh, to continue to get small business and the others to invest and grow, creating opportunities, standing up around the world to other countries, making them pay their fair share and be true partners. And another thing too, I don't think there's anybody hard on Russia than President Donald Trump has sure, been. There it is. He has stood up to them, to him, and he's done it in a very diplomatic but very firm way. I can tell you, he's a lot afraid of uh, of Donald Trump than he was of Obama, who was more of a mink lamb. Um, <laughs> so th th that that's what that's what needs to come out. But unfortunately, unfortunately, the liberal media has attached their campaign. They're the campaign co-chairs for the re-election of of, of um, uh, Joe Biden. But I. A lot of white people want to come out and publicly say they're for Donald J. Trump, but they don't want to be called racist because what has been defined now. And then a lot of blacks want to come out and support Donald Trump, but they're afraid of being, of being called Republicans or sellout, et cetera. So the way they have done Donald Trump, once you become confined, you become defined to that definition. And so they have him looking like the racist when Joe Biden is really the racist. Donald Trump is really helping American people, where Joe Biden is hiding from the American people. It's a big difference. Mm, Absolutely. Helping Just want to tell you, uh, thank you so much, Representative Vernon Jones, for being with us. I think you are one of the most intelligent, articulate, powerful voices out there, not to mention courageous, for you standing up and telling the truth about President Trump and what he's accomplished, actually focusing on the facts and getting out there and, and telling the truth about it. So what a pleasure. We're really honored that you were on our program today. Look forward to having you again. Thank you so much. All right. God bless. Be sure to like and share this broadcast. We'll be back after this short commercial break with more of The Right View.
We know you want to give Donald Trump four more years to fight for you in Washington, but he isn't just up against Joe Biden. He's up against the Democrat fundraising machine, and he needs all the help he can get. Don't just assume because his opponent hasn't completed a single sentence that this campaign is over. Crazy things happen, like this woman becoming Speaker of the House. Support the president today by texting Trump to 88022. Donald Trump is counting on every single one of his supporters to text Trump to 88022 now. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. And welcome back to The Right View. Joining us now is Jenna Ellis, Senior Legal Advisor to the Trump Campaign. Jenna, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's great to be on The Right View. You know, the Trump campaign filed a lawsuit just this week in the Western District of Pennsylvania to protect election integrity. Uh, Could you discuss the importance of this lawsuit and tell us what this is all about? Yeah, so this lawsuit is just one of many that uh, the Trump campaign and the RNC is fighting to make sure to protect and preserve uh, election integrity. And so we as the American people and our system of government is founded on we the people and self-governance, that we get to select and prefer who we put in office to represent us in government. We do that through our elections and making sure that they are free and fair and that every eligible voter gets to vote and their vote is counted freely, fairly, and accurately once is incredibly important. And so what's going on now is that the Democrats are trying to remove election safeguards and they're trying uh, to manipulate the election rules heading into November with just four months left until the election. And the Trump campaign is fighting back because President Trump understands that all Americans need to be able to be free and secure in our elections and making sure that election integrity matters. So we are fighting uh, these lawsuits all across the country. You can go to protectthevote.com to see where we're fighting, why election integrity matters, and uh, what these principles uh, can tell us in terms of where uh, we are at uh, heading into November. Yeah, Jenna, you mentioned that the Democrats are are using the coronavirus pandemic to push all mail-in voting. Can you discuss how dangerous this is to election integrity? Absolutely. So this is something that President Trump, of course, has been uh, widely broadcasting through his Twitter, through uh, so many other channels about the dangers of mail-in voting. And so uh, what this is, is that uh, Democrats are trying to manipulate their election laws and change their election laws uh, just a few months before the election. And they've done this even in uh, state and local elections as well as the primaries. So just this past week, uh, we've had an instance where in New Jersey, uh, there was over 20% fraud in their mail-in system with a local city council uh, Mm men election. And the attorney general there just filed charges because when you have uh, more than 20% of people voting um, and you have ballot that are manipulated, uh, then that is ripe for fraud. So our Attorney General Bill Barr um, has been very vocal as well that uh, this type of uh, fraud in ballots uh, needs to to be prevented and we need to make sure that every ballot is secure. And so what mail-in voting does is that uh, the state will just send Uh, ballots out to uh, perhaps unregistered addresses to um, unverified individuals. We don't know if they're eligible to vote. We don't even know if they're alive. And so those ballots go into the mail and they can be um, either stolen, manipulated, thrown away. Uh, They're ripe for ballot harvesting where uh, people can target Uh, for example, nursing homes and say, "Uh, let me come and pick up your ballot. And then if you vote the way that we want you to, we'll go ahead and drop that off at a precinct location or we might throw it away. There are so many different ways um, that there can be election interference. And that's why this is such an important issue to make sure that all votes that are eligible count and count only once, that we don't have multiple instances of voting and that this isn't a ripe area for fraud. All right, so Jenna, you know, you're laying this out very well, and I know the president uh, really cares about this issue as a lot, as should any American voter, because we want to maintain the integrity of our voting uh, process. Now, what states, if you can tell us, uh, that perhaps have been highlighted that you think are problematic and uh, rife for this kind of uh, fraud to be continuing? Yeah, well, so uh, Democrat-led states, particularly like California, uh, like uh, you know, Pennsylvania, 
um, and others that you can go and see on protectthevote.com. Um, there are a number of states that are trying to change uh, their election laws in the midst of coronavirus to just go from right. a system that you can go in person to the polling location, which is, of course, the safest way. And President Trump, by the way, has just added funding in the CARES Act to make sure that all polling places are safe and secure in the midst of coronavirus. It's absolutely safe for people to go. And um, if they can stand in line at a grocery store, at a hardware store, we can stand in line to vote. Um, there, is also, there is also a difference between absentee and mail-in voting. And so what these states are trying to do is to manipulate um, this unmonitored system where they're trying to actually close polling locations to encourage people to just uh, mail in their ballot rather than dropping it off at a precinct or making sure that the chain of custody is maintained. So um, people have to understand that the mainstream media is trying to twist to this and to say that absentee and mass mail-in voting is the same and it's not. Absentee is where one individual like myself. Right now, I'm in D.C. I'm a registered Colorado voter, so I can request my ballot and, and ask uh, to go through the process of uh, an absentee and make sure that I identify myself, I give them the correct address, and then my ballot is sent to me through the mail. That's a perfectly safe process. I can send it back through the mail or I can go and drop it off um, in Colorado from there at a polling location, and that's fine. But absentee um, is different than mail-in. Mail-in is where the, uh, the state will just send in, again, those millions of ballots out into the ether. Uh, right now at my apartment, I've gotten mail from the past three residents here. I mean, Ooh. this is where if they're just sending Terrible. all of these live ballots through the mail. We know that there will be uh, instances of fraud that absolutely can undermine not just the presidential election, but all the way down tickets. So it's incredibly important that Team Trump continues to fight and that every American understands, regardless of what candidate you support, why is it just that the Democratic Party is the only one that wants to remove safeguards? Because they know they can't win. They have to right. lie, cheat, absolutely. and steal to manipulate elections. And every American should uh, care that our ballot integrity is preserved because we care about free and fair elections in this country. Well, Jenna, you just hit the nail on the head there. The mm -hmm. reason that this is happening is because the Democrats know they cannot win. Who is actually excited about voting for Joe Biden? And by the way, when you contrast all the stuff that this president has done over the past three and a half years for this country, it's a no-brainer to people. So we've seen what they've done from the very beginning. The Russia collusion hoax, Ukraine, they tried to impeach this president. They've done every single thing, every step of the way to try and hurt Donald Trump. But the people of this country aren't buying it. So what is their final stop? How do they stop President Trump? They interfere with the elections. We are not going to let it happen. And President Trump has been standing up very, very strong on this. He recently spoke out about the importance of voting in person. You said it, if we can stand in line at a grocery store and make sure that we're safe, we can do it at a polling location. Let's play this clip. I want to get your reaction. People went to the polls and voted during World War I. They went to the polls and voted during World War II. We can safely go to the polls and vote during COVID-19. Well, there it is from the man himself. Jenna, how does in-person voting better ensure free and fair elections? And can you discuss the many examples of voter fraud tied to mail-in voting? Yeah, well, first, Laura, you know, every time I hear the president speak, I'm so proud to be an American. And, you know, he is talking about all of the challenges that we faced in our nation's history. But as Americans, we have always made sure that we get out and exercise our right to vote. That is something that is a hallmark of our system of government, and it is a privilege for all of us to be able to go and vote for the people that represent us. And so when we get out and we actually go to the polls, uh, that is a much better uh, method because you can't. You have to have um, some sort of identification at the polls to make sure that you are a registered voter, that you get your ballot, and that you only vote once. And also that the chain of custody of the ballot is preserved. And what I mean by that is that um, if you allow someone to take your ballot 
and then you're trusting that they go and turn it into a polling location, you don't actually know whether or not that happened. And so that's what ballot harvesting is, where the Democrats will actually hire people to go around and to collect ballots. They could be tampered with, they could be thrown away. Uh, all kinds of things could happen to their ballots. And that happens um, in documented instances where ballot harvesters have manipulated the outcome of elections uh, because they have tampered with the ballots uh, that they have been entrusted with. And so it's really important for people, if you feel uh, safe and secure, and you should, to get out and vote on election day. That is the best method that you can. Um, mm -hmm. Absentee is also um, a good system because uh, that's just through the mail in terms of um, get it, receiving your ballot and then you mail it directly. But even then, there are documented instances of mail yeah. carriers uh, that have tampered with ballots. And so that's why the best uh, possible method is to go in person, but definitely uh, we are fighting to stop this manipulated election law uh, for mass mail-in ballots because um, there is even an opportunity, as Attorney General Bill Barr said, for foreign interference, for uh -huh. uh, for just fraudulent ballots to be added, uh, to be collected. And so this is something where, again, if we as Americans respect and understand our right and privilege to elect our leaders. We have to all care about not only participation, get out and vote, make it a landslide election for President Trump that we the people are heard and that we make sure that we get out and vote, we participate, but also we can participate at the polls. If you want to be a volunteer at your polling location to make sure that election integrity is preserved, sign up at armyfortrump.com and volunteer on election day. Yeah, you know, Jenna, you know, get out and vote and go get your friends and your neighbors and your children who are old enough to vote. Everyone needs to go out and vote on election day. I don't think anyone really saw 2016 um, that how close we were to losing our country. And we see now the president fighting this fight for us and we now have to fight for him. And I think this is the way to do it. I tell people all the time that if you're concerned about fraud, let's make the margin so big exactly. that yeah. it won't matter. Run up the score. So Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jenna, for joining us today. This was a wonderful conversation. Yeah, thanks, Jenna. And don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this one final break. Stay right there. Hey, Laura Trump here. The fake news media has spent years trying to stop President Trump with their lies and their witch hunts but still our movement is stronger than ever. We can't let the fake news media drown out our positive message about all of our incredible accomplishments. Make sure you're getting your news directly from the source by subscribing to the official Donald J. Trump podcast today. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or Google Play. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. My administration will take all necessary steps to safeguard our citizens from this threat. Hysterical xenophobia. Be giving Americans a false sense. Is it accurate that if these uh, steps had not been put in place, it could have been two million people dead here in the United States? Yes. No matter how hard they try to stop us, they can't. We built the greatest economy the world has ever seen, and we're going to do it again. <laughs> Together, we're beating back the invisible enemy. What the federal government did was a phenomenal accomplishment. Through it all, the world has witnessed the unyielding resolve of our incredible American people. Promise made, promise kept. And I'm fighting for you, and I love doing it with everything that I have. And you know that. With the grace of God, we will win this war, and we will win this war quickly. And we will make America great again. Welcome back to The Right View. I'm Mercedes Schlapp, and as usual, we wanna get our ladies' final thoughts. Laura, I'll start with you. All right, well, I don't think anybody could have missed them. They're being called Ken and Karen, <laughs> but their actual last name is McCloskey. This is the photo. I'm sure everybody saw them. This couple who literally went outside of their home to protect their home oh, with yeah. guns whenever people trespassed onto their private property, um, this group of supposed protesters, but as we've seen, nobody really knows when things are gonna escalate, when you have 
a couple of people in there that want to turn it into looting, rioting, burning things down, violence. And so rightly so, these folks got outside of their home and stood there with a gun. Listen, this is why we have the Second Amendment in this country, is so people have the ability to protect themselves. And I want to remind all the folks out there that want to defund the police. This is what happens when you defund the police. Whenever you make police officers fearful of actually doing their jobs and making sure that the law is upheld, people start taking it into their own hands. But this just goes to show you why it is so dangerous to consider defunding the police out there. People start taking it into their own hands. And now, fortunately, nobody got hurt. There was no issue with this situation. Everybody moved right along when they saw him come outside. But it could have it could have escalated. Who knows what could have happened? Just one more reason we need to keep our police force in this country. Yeah, there's no question. And we know that the Minneapolis City Council voted to disband the police. Would love to know what their new structure looks like. I'm sure the citizens and the residents of Minneapolis are are must be very concerned. But I've actually got a joke for both of you. So three uh, three people walk into a Joe. Biden fundraiser. One, Beto O'Rourke. Two, Cecile Richards. Three, Julianne Castro. I mean, you are talking about no guns, abortion on demand, and open borders. I don't know. It doesn't. Well, by the it. way, it's it. Uh, you're saying it's a joke. It's actually terrifying because that could become reality if people don't vote the right way on That's November right. 3rd. Keep that in your mind, folks. Yeah. Very scary. No, and that no could be why he that. only had 65 viewers on his online program oh, bless compared his heart. to ours with millions. Yeah, uh, no question about like that. that. <laughs> Except Willie Nelson was part of that crew. I mean, you know, you kind of got to like Willie sometimes with his music, but that's okay. Katrina, final thoughts. You know, I have to say I'm a big fan of Ken and Karen, and Laura, that was a great one because one thing is for sure, no no one will be looting or destroying that home anytime soon. Uh, so my final thought today is uh, social media. Everyone knows that big tech is sort of really putting their tentacles in and silencing conservative voices, including the president of the United States. Well, there are alternatives out there, and many of your favorite Trump campaign people are on the new app called Parler, P-A-R-L-E-R. -E it is the alternative to Twitter. Um, I encourage everyone to go and reserve your handle because we all know the generation uh, that's coming behind us, their biggest issue is going to be finding a good <laughs> handle in social media. So everyone get over there, uh, Parlor app, and uh, sign up, get your handles, and follow all of us on Twitter. Team Trump is on there. The, t the Trump campaign is on there. We're looking forward to communicating with everyone in this new non-censored version of Twitter. So we'll see you there. Laura Great. Trump and Eric Trump are on there as well, by the way. And just for <laughs> everyone's information, uh, je parle français, I speak French as well. And parler is actually parler, which means That's to right. speak en français. You, you make this, you, 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 it, you, it sounds beautiful. I got to oh, tell you. Merci. Sounds beautiful. Merci. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'm going to have to tell my teenage kid to get me on parlor. God only knows I don't even know how to put it together. So this is why you have a bunch of children like I do. Kimberly, we let's get your you name, Mercedes. You'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Should be pretty easy. Um, Kimberly, let's get your last thoughts here, your final thoughts. This weekend, we celebrate the 4th of July, America's Independence Day. Laura and I will be joining the president on Friday in South Dakota at Mount Rushmore to kick off the weekend with an amazing fireworks display. But as radicals and anarchists try to tear down American history in cities across the nation, I think it is important to spend the weekend appreciating the promise that was created on July 4th, 1776 in the Declaration of Independence our founders wrote. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And later in the Constitution, they wrote, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity to ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. 
And in order to form a more perfect union, America's greatness is not due to some belief that we are perfect as a nation, but that our country was founded on principles of equality and the pursuit of perfection. We have made tremendous strides as a nation, and with President Trump's leadership, we will continue to progress as a more perfect union. I hope you all have a terrific Independence Day. And we'll see you all next time as we continue to fight to reelect President Donald J. Trump and keep America great. So, Laura and Kimberly, you are going to be out on Mount Rushmore. What an exciting event that's going to be with the president. I mean, God only knows we need to ensure that we teach our children about our founding fathers, about the Constitution, which is, you know, they were flawed men, but they had such an, a strong framework that really helped build America. And, and I just think it's so sad that these Democrats are focused on tearing America down as opposed to President Trump, who is focused on building America strong. So with that, I want to say, ladies, it's always a pleasure to be with all of you. But remember, we need you all to get involved. The clock is ticking. We got to get this president reelected. A couple ways to do this is download the new groundbreaking Trump 2020 app now available on Apple and Android. Sign up to volunteer, register for events, and win exclusive prizes. To stay in contact with us, please text TRUMP to 88022. And remember, you can always volunteer at armyfortrump.com. That's a great way to get involved to help get our president reelected. So remember to sign up. And with that, everyone, remember to join us again next Wednesday with The Right View with your favorite ladies. Uh, we're going to be going on the road hopefully soon, and we want to see you all. But in the meantime, we're right here on Team Trump Online. So thank you so much. God bless our president. God bless you all. Have a happy Independence Day. Remember, let's fight for freedom together, and let's get this president reelected. Thanks so much, and good night. under God. And we will make America great again. And the best is yet to come.